In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how to build a search bar using Flutter. We're going to be building an application that is going to display to the user a list of products that we're going to be fetching from an API. And then the user is able to filter through these products by typing in some kind of a search query. For example, I want to search for wireless earbuds. So I'm going to type in wireless or something like that. And then it's going to show me all of the results that correspond to that specific search query that I've entered. To do this, we're going to be pulling all of our information from an API, and then we're going to be taking a look at how we can use this search bar in tandem with that API to create this whole cohesive application. As always, if you're enjoying the video thus far, then please don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe to my channel so that you get notified every time I release a new video. And with that said, let's get into the video. So to get started, the first thing that we're going to be doing is actually taking a look at the dependencies that we're going to be using for this project. To actually build the search for functionality, we're not going to be using any external dependency. The only dependency that we're going to be using is a package called Dio, which basically is a very powerful HTTP networking package that we're going to be using to actually communicate with our REST API and get the list of products from there. So with that said, let's copy this, come back, and then I will come to the pubspec.yaml file and paste this under the dependency section. As always, links to all of the resources that I mentioned within this video, as well as the link to the source code can be found in the description below. So feel free to take a look at it if you're confused at any point. So now that I've added the DO dependency under the dependency section, I can come back to my home page, which is a stateful widget class that I've created, which for its build function currently returns a scaffold. And we're going to be starting everything from scratch. One other thing that I'd like to let you know is that I have created a model folder under my lib folder where I've created a product.dart file where I've pasted in the code for what the product is going to look like that we're going to be getting from our API. You can just basically download the source code for the actual project and then copy and paste this file in because this is just a generic model file and there's nothing special that we're doing here. This is basically going to allow us to take the JSON that we get as a response from the API and then convert that into an instance of a Dart class. So with that said, I will close down this file but you can download the source code and then put this file here, but it's not necessary for what I'm going to be showing you in this tutorial. And let's talk about the final thing, and that is where we're going to be getting our data from. We're going to be using the freetestapi.com API for products. It provides you a bunch of different APIs, but specifically we're going to be working with the products API and specifically the endpoint which says, we want slash product. So this is the actual endpoint that we're going to be using. And if you take a look at the actual search query parameter, you can see that to the slash v1 slash product endpoints, we can add a query parameter called search, where we can specify what our search term is, if we want to search for a specific product. So we're going to be using this as well later on. So with this said, let's get into the actual coding process now. So to get started with the actual development process, the first thing that I'm going to be doing is actually start debugging the application on the simulator. And once the application is actually running on the simulator, then I will resume the video. So welcome back everybody. As you can see, the application is now running on the simulator and I have a blank scaffold being shown to me. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is actually coming to my scaffold and then adding an app bar here so that we can show the F commerce title for our application within the app bar like so. So now that this is done, the next thing that I'm going to be doing is actually taking a look at building the body for the actual UI. So the body for the scaffold is going to be a call to a function called build UI. And once this is done, then I'm going to basically define this function. I'm going to say that this function will return a widget. It's going to be called underscore build UI. And then within this function, I'm going to return a sized box dot expand widget. And then it's going to have a child. The child is going to be a column and the column is going to have some children, which for now is going to be an empty list. With this done, hopefully everything's still working so we can proceed to the next step. So for the next step, what I'd like to do is firstly take a look at the logic for loading the products. And then from there, we'll take a look at logic for setting up our actual search field. So to load the products, what I'm going to be doing is using a function, which is going to fetch the data from our API. And then to display the products, I'm going to be using a list view. So let's take a look at the list view side of things first. So what I'm going to be doing is actually creating a function that returns yet again a widget. And I'm going to say that this function is going to be called underscore products list view like so once this is done, this function will not take in any parameters. And I will say that we are going to return a sized box. And then for the sized box, I'm going to give a height to my actual list. And the height in this case is going to be 80% the height of the screen. So I'll do media context size of context dot height, and then 0.80. 
there we go and then i'm going to give it width as well and the width will be the complete width of the screen so i'll just paste this code in because it's very similar to what we've been doing before then i'll specify the child for this actual container and the child in this case is going to be a list view but specifically we're going to be using the list view dot builder function and the reason for that is because we need to programmatically build our list based upon the actual products that we fetch from our api so we need to define the item builder function here which is basically going to define how each of the child within this list view are going to be built it takes in two parameters a context and an index and then basically within the function we return the actual child for this list view so I'll leave that to be empty for now. And then for now, we can set the item count to be zero. So with this done, I can take this products list view. I can come back to my build UI function. And within the column, I can add to the children's list a call to the products list view function. So now with this done, we can move to the next step. That is to actually load the products. So to load the products, we're going to be using the endpoint that I had shown you previously, which is slash v1 slash products. So let's go ahead and do that. So to do this, I'm going to be doing the following thing. The first thing that I'm going to be doing is that on my home page state, I'm going to be creating a list, which is going to keep track of the products that we're going to be showing within our list view. So I'm going to say we're going to have a list and this is going to contain products within it. And this product class comes from the product.dart file. And then I'm going to say it's going to be called underscore products. And to begin with, it's going to be an empty list like so. And then we can import the product class from dot dot slash models slash product dot dart. Once this is done, the next thing that I'm going to be doing is on the actual home page state class, I'm going to define the init state function. And then within the init state function, I'm going to say that after the super classes init state function has been called, I want to call a function called load data so that we can actually go and fetch the data from the API. Then once this is done, I'm going to define the function. I'm going to say it's going to be called load data. It would not return anything. For now, it's not going to take in any parameters. I'll mark it as async and open it up. And then we can actually start the actual logic here for getting the products. So the first thing that I'm going to do is define the URL or the endpoint, I should say, where we're going to be getting the information from. So that is going to be URL is equals to, and then the actual products endpoint. So I'll copy and paste that in. It's going to be the following, HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash free test API.com forward slash API forward slash V1 forward slash products. Once this is done, we're going to be using now DO to actually perform our request. So I'm going to do the following on my actual state class. I'm going to create a variable final do underscore do and set that to a new instance of the do object. And then we can actually import this package as well. Once this is done, I can come back to my load data function. And here I'm going to do the following. I'll say that I'll create a variable type response, call it res and set it equal to await underscore do dot get and we're going to be getting the data from this URL that we had specified. So once this is done, the next thing that I am going to be doing is then making sure that the responses data is not null. So if the response.data is not null, then what would I like to do? Well, in that case, for now, let's do this. Let's print response.data like so. And that's pretty much all we had to do. So I'll save the file. I'll actually open up the debug console and then let's actually come back and let's restart our app. And let's see if something gets printed out. So as you can see in the debug console, we're granting a list being printed out, which contains JSON objects, each object corresponding to a specific product. So now what we need to do is iterate over this list. And for each of these JSON objects that we're seeing, convert them into an instance of the product class that we have created. So it's going to be pretty simple. The first thing that I'm going to do is basically create a list, which is going to keep a track of the products. So I'm going to say it's going to be a list of products. I'm going to call this products equals to an empty list. And just to not confuse you guys, you can see that the products list that is our, our homepage state class is actually underscore products, not products. So this is a different list. So then what I'm going to be doing is that if I made sure that the response.data is not null, then I'm going to do a for loop where I'm going to iterate over all of the actual JSON objects that I get in the data. So for that, I can do for var p in response.data, I can do the following. And here I'm going to do products.add. So remember, this is this products list that we've defined. I'm going to do product.fromJSON and pass it the actual JSON, which is going to be the p variable so there we go so what we're basically doing here is that to our products list we're adding a new instance of our product class and this instance is created from the json file that we pass to it and the json contains all of the data so the from json is a helper 
constructor, which basically allows us to take in a JSON object and then return to us an instance of product. So now that this is done, the last thing that I'm going to be doing is once all of this is done and we're outside of the actual for loop and outside of the if clause is to call set state and then do products, which is in this case going to be underscore products is equals to products. And that's pretty much all we have to do and let's do command save. With this done, I'm going to come back to where I am building my actual list. And here for the item builder now, I'm going to say that we are now going to be returning a list tile. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is that for the outcome counts here, I'm going to say that it's going to be underscore products dot length and then save. And then for the list tile here, what are we going to be showing? So let's firstly show just the title of the actual product. So for that, I can say that the title for the list tile is going to be a text widget and the text widget is going to have some data and that data we need to get from the product. So how do we access our products from the products list? Well, what I can do is using the index that gets passed to me, create a variable which stores a reference to the product. So this is going to be a variable called product of type product. And we're going to get the product from the products list at the specific index that we're building this list tile for. And then here we can do product dot name. There we go. So let's do save and hopefully we should see it but let's restart the application. And oh, I had a break point, so I'll skip that. And there we go. You can see that the actual products are being printed out and we can scroll through this list. So now we are at the point of actually creating the search bar so that we can search through these products. So how are we going to be doing that? Well, to do that, what I am going to be doing is basically coming to my build UI function to the actual column. And before we add our actual list view, I'm going to add a call to function called search bar. So on top of our list view, we're going to have a search bar. Then I'm basically going to define this function, say that it's not going to take anything in as its parameter. And then I'm going to say that we are going to be returning a sized box. Then the size box is going to have a specific width, which will be the 80% width of our screen. So for that, I'll use media query that size of context dot width times 0 0.80. And then I'm going to have a child, which is going to be a text field. And then the text field is going to basically for now show nothing. Let's just see how it looks. So it looks like this. One thing that I'd like to do is maybe just change the decoration property on this. So I'm going to say that it's going to be const input decoration. And maybe the border can be outline input border. There we go. Then let's do save. There we go. It looks much nice. And then I can add a hint text here as well, which basically says search. And then it's now looking much better. Then what I'd like to do is that on the text field, I'd like to basically define the on submitted function callback, which gets a value passed to it. And this value is basically whatever the user inputs within the search field. And then what I'd like to do is that whenever the user types in something and then submits it, I want to call our underscore load data function. So I'm going to do underscore load data like so. And then here, what I'd like to do is pass the value, but currently we're not taking in the value for the load data function. So I'll modify the function and I'll say now it's going to take in a optional named argument. And this argument will be string optional search text. There we go. Looks good. So let's do save. Let's come back to our search bar function load data. And then basically for the load data function do search text is value. And that's pretty much all we have to do and do command save. So now with this done, what I'd like to do is come back to where I have my load data function. And here I'm going to say that in the case that our search text is not null, then I'd like to basically add a query parameter to the end of this URL. So to do that, it's going to be the following. I'm going to say if the search text not null. So if it's not null, then what would I like to do? Well, then I'd like to basically to my URL append the following query parameter. And that is going to be question mark. And then you can actually come to the free test api.com products API documentation, you can see that the query parameter needs to be question mark search equals to. So let's do that question mark search equals to and then we basically put in the query here. So the query here is going to be the actual search text. And that's pretty much all we have to do and do command save. So now with this done to our actual URL, if the search text is given, we're appending the following query string. And this is going to ensure that the actual products that get returned to us have that specific search term within them. 
So with this said, that's pretty much all we have to do so we can test this out. So to test it out, what I'll do is restart my application. Okay, I can see everything. Now basically click on the actual search tab. You can see that we're getting this overflow error. So let's quickly fix it by coming to the actual scaffold and then saying the, the resize to avoid bottom instant property is false. And now if I type anything in here, for example, ultra and press enter, or you can press the tick here, you can see that now the only result that is being returned to us is ultra book. If I want, I can say this to be head, for example, and press done. Now we're seeing just headphones. I can do wireless and then press done. And there we go, we're seeing all of these wireless products. So now what I'll do is restart my application. And the last thing that I'd like to do is just make the list tiles a bit better. So firstly, I'd like to add an image for each of these products. So for that, I can come back to my list tile. And then here I can add a leading property. And the leading property is going to be image.network. And then here I can do product.image. There we go save and now we're seeing the image then for the subtitle i like to have the brand and the price so i can do subtitle again a text widget and then here i am going to say that the first text is going to be the actual product's brand so product dot brand let's see how it looks there we go it says sony dji and then i can have after this an actual dot and following that i can have the actual price of the product so that can be product dot price dot two string let's see how it looks there we go i'd also like to add a dollar sign to the price so i can do backslash dollar sign to escape the actual character and there we go we can see the dollar sign as well and then finally i'd like to add a trailing widget for the actual ratings so let's do that as well so for that to the same list tile i'll add trailing is a text widget and the text widget is going to contain the following text which is the product dot rating dot two string yeah we can see the rating and then after that i will have a space and then a star emoji so that's pretty much all we had to do so with this done let's give a final test to our application so i'll come to the search bar type in fitness and then done and there we go we can only see products that relate to fitness i can type in something in the middle as well for example tread and hopefully this should show me treadmill. There we go. So everything looks great. The last thing that I'm going to be now showing you guys is that in the case that no products are found, for example, I do tread X. I don't think there's going to be anything like that. You can show the text, which is no products were found. So for that, it's going to be fairly simple. What you're going to be doing is coming to your column and here you're going to be using an actual collection if statement and where I'm going to be doing the following. I'll say that the products list view is only going to be added to the column in the case that the products is not empty and then i'm going to have another if statement like this and this is going to be products dot is empty so in the case if it's empty then i'm going to do a text and then say no products found there we go and then save and there you go you can see no products and then after this i'm basically going to be wrapping the actual text with an actual padding widget just to add some padding from the top like so, and I'm going to say the padding from all sides will be 25, just so that it looks a bit better. There we go. So with this, that's pretty much it for today's tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed and learned a thing or two about how to implement a fully functional search bar within your Flutter application, and then use it for various different purposes like we did when it comes to interacting with the RESTful API. If you enjoyed the video, then please don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe to my channel so that you get notified every time I release a new video. And as always, stay happy, stay healthy, keep learning, keep growing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.